Hi all, this lesson is on the factors affecting optimum weight and by optimum weight we mean the ideal weight for the maximal performance, the, the best performance in your sport and this differs between performers for a number of reasons. Firstly, between different sports a different optimum weight is going to be required so if we think about a weightlifter or a rugby player, they're going to have to have a quite a high optimum weight because they need to have a large amount of muscle mass. When we compare that to a runner, a long distance runner, they need to be relatively light because they don't want to have a high, high percentage of fat or muscle mass. Even within sports, performers could have a different optimum weight compared to the people around them based on their position. So if we think about sports such as rugby, the, the forwards and particularly the, the prop forwards who, who require a large amount of weight in order to be stable in the scrum, their optimum weight is going to be a lot higher than a, a scrum half who it needs to be more agile and needs to be a little bit quicker around the base of the scrum. A popular way of recording our weight is through the BMI scale and BMI stands for body mass index and this is where we compare our, our height to our weight in a chart as shown here and we get a score uh, and an overall description such as underweight, healthy, overweight, obese or extremely obese. However, this isn't a brilliant measure for sports performers because it doesn't take into account muscle mass. So a weightlifter or a rugby player or perhaps a boxer who is going to have a large amount of muscle, they're likely to come out on this chart, the BMI scale, as extremely obese. But this doesn't really tell the whole picture because they might be perfectly healthy and actually at the, at the optimum weight for their sport. But because they, they are very heavy due to their muscle mass, they come out as extremely obese. In order for a sports performer to move towards their optimum weight for their, their sport and performance in their sport, then they have to consider energy balance. Energy balance is how many calories we take in and how many calories we burn off. And if this number is the same, so the number we take in, the number we, we burn off through exercise is the same, then we'll maintain our weight and it won't change. If we start to take in more calories, so you're, you're eating a lot of calories and you're not burning off many calories, then obviously you're going to start to gain weight. And if you stop eating as much and you're not taking in as many calories, but you start to exercise more and burn off more calories, then you're going to start to lose weight. However, things aren't quite as simple as this because we also have to consider our metabolic rate. The metabolic rate differs for every, every individual and it's how fast we burn off calories at rest. So some people have a very high metabolic rate and they can eat a lot of food and not exercise very often, but they still burn off their calories so they, they don't end up putting on too much weight. Other people have a really low metabolic rate and they don't eat very much and they can do lots and lots of exercise but still find it hard to lose weight. Energy is measured in kilocalories and is obtained from the food that we eat. On average a male requires 2,500 kcal per day whereas a female requires 2,000. Gender affects our calorie intake because men tend to be taller and heavier than women, so they will naturally require more calories to maintain their body shape. Further to gender, calorie intake is also dependent on age, height and energy expenditure. In terms of age, a teenager who is growing is likely to require a high, higher calorie intake than an adult or a pensioner. Taller people will naturally require more calories than shorter people due to their size and athletes or sports people who expend a lot of energy will require a very large calorie intake. A marathon runner may cover about 100 kilometres per week during a training programme, 
meaning that they need a daily calorie intake of about 3,500 in order to give them the energy that they need. Calorie intake might not be something that we consider in our day-to-day -day life, but it certainly needs consideration for athletes and performers to reach the best of their ability.